Good evening everyone, and this is my presentation on Dungeons and Dragons, how to create an effective character. My name is Tyler Barnett. To begin, we'll start with a little overview of what we'll be discussing today. We will start with races for character creation, classes for character creation, ability scores for character creation, and we will end with descriptions for character creation. Races in D&D. So, choosing a race is very specific. While you can do it purely for what you want to play and how you want to play it, there are ways to better and more effectively choose a race for your party and a role you wish to fill. If you wish to go for a more strong melee type of character, then races that give you a racial feat for strength and constitution would be the best for you. Racial, f racial traits are what you get when you choose a class. So for my Dragonborn here, you see that he gets a plus two to strength and plus one to constitution. Uh, another racial trait that he would receive is his breath weapon, which is specific to Dragonborns. A breath weapon is like what you'd see in most fantasy movies where he would shoot fire from his mouth. Classes in D&D. Choosing a class, once again, is up to you, but there are ways to do that so more effectively. There are things you need to consider, such as the role you wish to play, whether that be a tank, a damage dealer, or a healer. Another thing you need to consider are the ability score improvements. Uh, those were given to you by your specific race, and you should deal out these ability score increases based off of your class. For example, if you were a paladin, you should have uh, ability score increases that are based on strength, charisma, or constitution, as those will be your top three scores. You should also look into the proficiencies given by your race, and these can be such things as deception, stealth, and persuasion. Finally, you should look at the abilities you receive at future levels. So as you can see, my paladin is level 4, so he will receive abilities such as divine smite, divine health, and even more at future levels. Next, we will be moving on to ability scores in D&D. Ability scores. So, first things you need to figure out are the method at which you get your ability scores. These will mainly be chosen by your DM, but if you get manual roles, then you will be able to get the highest scores possible, as that is the most effective way to get your ability scores. Uh, choosing ability scores should be based on the class you receive. As I said before, if you wish to be a paladin, you should put your most ability scores, your highest ability score in strength, your second highest in charisma, and your third for constitution. Descriptions in D&D. So descriptions and backgrounds are the most creative you can get with character creation. While choosing your background is purely up to you, you can choose based on the needs of your party. When keeping that in mind, there are a few things that you should consider. These are such things as tool proficiencies, which are tools such as thieves' tools, smiths' tools, and a musical instrument, stuff like that. Another thing you should consider are the skill proficiencies granted. As I said previously, skill proficiencies are things such as being proficient in arcana, history, uh, investigation, intimidation, things like that. Background features are also what you will receive when you choose a background. So for example, my Dragonborn has the Haunted One background, and this will allow him to have patrons from all over come to his aid due to the trauma that he faced and the fact that you will be able to see the trauma that he faced in his eyes. Finally, you should consider the languages that you will receive. Languages are things like common, undercommon, and infernal. Does the audience have any questions, comments, or concerns?
Thank you so much for listening to my presentation and have a great day. Can you pick more than one? Is it up to um, the DM? Um, is it up to the general rules of whatever campaign you're doing? Uh, when picking multiple classes, that generally is up to the dungeon master. So mm -hmm. what that is called in D&D is multi-classing. And for example, in my campaign, my dungeon master will only allow us to multi-class when we are fifth level or higher. And with multi-classing, you are essentially taking what you taking uh, another class. So say you're uh, say you're a paladin and you want to multi-class in warlock. Doing that will essentially allow you to become a warlock and you will get features, abilities, spells from that specific class. Uh, the problem with multi-classing though is you really have to pick and choose which levels you want for each class. So if you're 15 levels in paladin, you can only be five levels in Warlock because the cap for most uh, campaigns is level 20. So okay. just keep that in mind. Anything else? Um, does race um, ever really have an effect on what class you want to pick? Or is it just any race for any class? Uh, so as I said, as I said before, race can be uh kind of dependent on your class so because certain races get certain racial bonuses to their ability scores they are not as optimized for certain classes so uh okay. for example a giant is uh they get a plus two to strength and a plus one to constitution if i believe so they are probably not going to be suited for a druid class because they because <laughs> those ability scores are not really needed for druid over other ability scores that makes sense yeah perfect uh anything um, else no i don't think i have anything else you covered it really well all right well uh thank you for listening and i appreciate your feedback of course